Hi everybody, I am doing this Love for Art 2019 uh, with Cinnamon Kumi and um, it was a little bit difficult to decide on what I was going to draw because of all the usual things, the trees, autumn and I asked one of my students what do you think of when you think of autumn and she said I think of owls drinking hot chocolate with gloves on and I said to her well actually I don't think owls can actually wear gloves so she turned a piece of paper over that she was working on and she drew me a pair of mittens so any of you out there wonder what owls do in the winter they actually wear mittens and she told me she thought about trees and snowmen and other squirrels and I thought about it and I thought well I have I've done squirrels before and I did this a long time ago I did a hedgehog going to bed and if you look in my other um, YouTube channel you probably will find it if you look through my videos if I might pop it in here somewhere so you can see or look it up and I was thinking about autumn you know what it means to me and as I live in a wood what it means to the other animals living here and I found out that squirrels don't actually sort of hibernate they do come out through the um, winter to collect things that they've buried and we still have a lot of deer and foxes and rabbits and hares so ah, I was thinking about what we do in the autumn what we start to prep and do and it reminded me of my granddad and my nan and it reminded me of the log fires that we have here and about some of the stories that we read over the winter and one of the stories that I loved my granddad used to read to me and my nan was Wind in the Willows or Toad a Toad Hall and I loved the opening scene of the book where Molly is spring cleaning and he goes out after his spring cleaning to the river bank and he watches Ratty and Ratty invites him for a picnic and they spend the whole of a lazy summer with Toad in his adventures and Badger and the weasels and ferrets and Toad at Toad Hall and after the adventures all through the summer an autumn comes and Molly goes back to his own little home content in the knowledge that he has friends and I decided to draw him at his picket fence saying goodbye to the summer those lazy salad days of summer and he goes down into his little hole and goes to sleep and I don't really know whether moles hibernate or not but I do know that we don't see as many as we used to when I was a little girl there used to be advertisements for moles and mole catchers because they ruined lawns but these days we don't see those kind of advertisements for mole catchers anymore and so I I wonder if they do hibernate when I used to have horses I used to go down to my field early in the morning to feed them in the autumn and you would see mole hills and you would sometimes see the moles emerge from the mole hills and you would see them going across in the dew but it's not something we see these days I don't know if it's because it's more concrete or there's more land being built on and when you live in a, a big town you don't see them so much as you do in a village I don't know but the idea of Molly 
stood by his white picket fence, waving goodbye to his friends. I thought it was a good autumn thing. Now, I'm not very good at drawing moles. It's not something I draw very often. And this is just a little fun exercise just to warm me up. I am in the middle of Ink October, so I am quite, at the moment, stretched out with drawing. I am also packing up um, a piece of art for an exhibition and about to do another piece of art, which we do in, <coughs> in our town. It's called Weird, Weird Wiltshire, and I live in Wiltshire, and we have lots of folklore and legends, and we have one about the Moonrakers, and the Moonrakers were a group of farmers that used to smuggle cheese from the custom and exiles and one day the custom and exiles thought that they would catch the farmers out for smuggling cheese and the farmers being a canny lot knew that this was going to happen and they hid the cheese in a pond and when the custom and exiles men came to get them, they were raking and they thought they were raking. Well, they could see they were raking at the moon, but they thought that the farmers were idiots because the farmer said we're trying to rake out the cheese and they knew it was the moon. The custom and exiles could see it was the moon. So the picture that I'm going to do is a hair we have lots of legends in our area about hares but he's going to stick his paw in a puddle and look at the moon and that's what i'm going to be doing so at the moment i have been flat out with open studios and work for exhibitions and in october so i do feel like mr mole i do feel like it would be really really lovely just to relax and hibernate with a good book maybe wind in the willows there are lots of good children's books that you can cuddle up to in the winter, like Alice in Wonderland is a good one. It takes you to far-flung places with really, really weird characters. But in the depth of winter, what I really like to read is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe with a roaring fire and a small plate of Turkish delight. Do you know what? I don't think there's anybody that doesn't like the line, the witch and the wardrobe. I think everybody, all my friends wanted to buy a wardrobe that we could actually go into, into another land. When you get a bit older though, and you don't really want to live in that kind of fantasy, another good book to snuggle up in the winter is The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, but The Hobbit especially. And I can tell you a little bit of story about how I discovered Bilbo Baggins for myself, was I used to teach riding many years ago, and there used to be every now and again, a big black dog would appear in the field. And he always seemed to know his way around, but I, it's a really sort of like an unusual dog. And one of the people that I kept, my horse is within the field, called him Bilbo. And he goes, oh, there's Bilbo off on his adventures. I went, what an unusual name for a dog. And he goes, you never heard of Bilbo Baggins? And I went, no. Anyway, by the end of the week, a book was shoved in my hands and I was told to go and read The Hobbit while I was in my element. It was one of the best things I'd ever read. And even better was I lived in one of the shires, Wilkeshire, but Oxfordshire, or Oxfordshire as we like to call it, is only 20 miles away from where the actual Lord of the Rings was written. So yeah, I'm quite lucky living where I live. Not only do I live with mystical Avebury and all the stone circles, I also live down the other end of the fantasy with Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings. So um, I do hope you enjoy this. You know, as a 
because I'm tired, it's not um, what I call one of my best drawings. But I really want to take part in the spirit of the thing because it's it's not every drawing that you do has to be the best. It's just keeping your hand in and sometimes drawing things that you're not really comfortable with and moles are not something that I'm really good at because they don't really lend themselves too much really and also I'm coming to the end of this book I've got about 20 pages left and I see that other people leave their sketchbooks and they don't um, finish them off but I'm loath to do that so it's making it more and more difficult as one side is getting fatter and fatter and it is falling apart as you can see by the yellow page I am just about to be pounced on by a kitten don't know if you just heard that she's just come up beside me and that's another thing I love about autumn is the log fires start to be lit and the animals all lay down beside well there's another cat just coming in don't know if you heard the cat flap <laughs> and all the animals come and lay down by the fire and it's just cozy and they have little lights on but no as I was saying um, moles are not my forte but then again it's really good to take yourself out of a comfort zone and when somebody sets you a challenge go for it because you'll never n never know if you're any good until you practice and this is what I practice on and you can see that he's starting to emerge on the paper on his white picket fence I give him a lovely dark blue door so that when the wind and the rain and the snow comes you won't see it it'll be like a little hole in the tree you won't, won't see his little door now I only used for this um, acrylics and a uniball white pen and a uniball black pen that was the only things that I used um, for this picture and I hope you do enjoy it um, it was quite fun doing it and I hope you will maybe follow me on YouTube or on my page Puffer Smoke I try to post as much as I can when I've not got a lot on so I would love you to thumbs up and maybe become a subby that would be brilliant and comment if you like this video and hopefully I'll see you soon on just look out for me so I'm now gonna go off and snuggle down with a piece of chocolate and a cup of hot chocolate with my cats and my dog and I will see you soon Bye-bye for now.